let's have a look at what the case says between 2020 and 2024 senior executives of an indian renewable energy company which was a portfolio company of an indian conglomerate an issuer company that operated in the renewable energy sector whose securities are traded on the u.s stock exchanges they're justifying the case that we have local standi because this conglomerate has shares trading in the u.s stock exchanges its largest shareholder a canadian institutional investor participated in a scheme to bribe indian government officials to ensure the executions of lucrative solar energy supply contracts with the indian government entities so this is not bribing the canadian government this is not bribing the u.s government this is indian government that adani was bribing indian government entities that's the charge that is being put here okay during the same period senior executives of the indian renewable energy company conspired to misrepresent anti-bribery practices to the u.s based investors and international financial institutions so this is the second justification of why the new york prosecutor's office has a local standi on this case <coughs> that they concealed from investors and institutions bribery of indian government officials to obtain billions of dollars in financing this is the third justification that they got the contracts by bribery and by not disclosing these contracts they managed to obtain billions of dollars in financing for green energy projects including corrupt solar energy supply contracts in addition senior executives of this company and its canadian institutional investor conspired to obstruct the u.s government's investigations into the bribery case fourth justification for the locus standi remember the prosecutor has to appear before the judge and the judge is going to ask them what is the locus standi of the new york prosecutor in a case of bribery that is allegedly taking place in india they are saying this is the case okay now who are these people the indian energy company okay headquartered in india conglomerate corporate offices in india the us issu issuer is a renewable energy company incorporated in mauritius now who are the defendants in this case the defendant gautam adani citizen of india resides in india founder of the conglomerate includes numerous portfolio companies including the energy company he served as the chairman and non executive director of the indian energy companies board of directors okay sagar adani citizen of india residing in india his is nephew from approximately october 2018 through the present sagar adani was the executive director of the indian energy companies board of directors vineet jain citizen of india resides in india from 2020 to 2023 he was the ceo of this company and from 2020 he was on the manage, managing director of the indian Com company's board of directors then ranjit gupta citizen of india resides in india from 2019 to 2022 he was the ceo of the us issuer and the ceo and managing director of the us issuer subsidiary that gupta was an officer employee and agent of the issuer as those terms are issued in the fcpa which is the us regulation on this that cyril kabans citizen of australia and france this is the foreign national that they are referring to this is the guy okay he resides in singapore that between 2016 and 2023 he was employed by a company associated with the canadian investor this is the canadian pension fund okay and from 2017 to 2023 was a non-executive director of the boards of directors of the u.s issuer and the u.s issuer subsidiary okay Kabans was a director of the U.S. issuer, and what all these details are, I'm going to come back to. Saurabh Agarwal, citizen of India, resides in India. From 2017 to 2023, he was employed by a company associated with the Canadian investor. This is the Canadian pension fund, and reported to the defendant Cyril Kabans. Saurabh Agarwal was a person, as that term is used in the FCPA, and their definition of the act goes on. Okay, Deepak Malhotra, citizen of India, resides in India. From 2018 to 2023, he was also employed by a company associated with the Canadian Mutual Fund. Then, Rupesh Agarwal, citizen of India, resided in India. From 2022 spring to July, 
he was a consultant for the us issuer and the us issuer subsidiary okay he was the chief strategy and commercial officer for the us issuer for ex approximately august 2022 through july 2023 he was the acting ceo the us issuer and the us issuer subsidiary this is azure power okay so the canadian pension fund buys a 50% stake in azure power and these guys are working for azure power deepak malhotra is working for the canadian pension fund and cyril kabans is working for the canadian pension fund this is what they are now alleging okay now this is where it gets into the down dirty co conspirator 2 okay and who is co conspirator number 2 co conspirator 2 is sagar adani now they say that sagar adani a high ranking executive position holder of the us issuer and us issuer subsidiary okay justifying all of this foreign official number 1 this is probably the australian cyril kabans okay from approximately may 2019 to june 2024 served as a high ranking government official of andhra pradesh india okay now foreign official for them is anybody who is not a us citizen got it the solar energy corporation of india secci was a company of the ministry of new and renewable energy under the central government of india whose mission was among other things to increase the use of renewable energy in india secci was state owned and state controlled performed a function that india treated as its own the secci was an instrumentality of the indian government and its officers and employees were foreign officials as those terms by the fcpa so basically not us citizens okay the country of india was comprised of numerous states and regions thank you for letting us know these include chatisgarh tamil nadu odisha jammu and kashmir and andhra pradesh which are governed by their own respective state and union governments thank you for letting us know now the chatisgarh state power distribution company limited tamil nadu generation and distribution company limited gridco limited jammu and kashmir power corporation limited andhra pradesh central power distribution corporation limited andhra pradesh eastern power distribution company limited and andhra pradesh southern power distribution company limited collectively the state distribution companies were the electricity companies in india okay it's as identifying the players these are the players so now make a note tamil nadu chatisgarh andhra pradesh jammu and kashmir and odisha these are the main players okay i'm going to skip through the definitions of what 1 lakh rupees is and what a 1 crore rupees is okay now these are the charges ranjit gupta while acting within the scope of their employment knowingly and willfully conspired and agreed with each other and others including gautam adani sagar adani and vinit jain to corruptly offer authorize and promise to pay and pay bribes to the benefit of government officials in india there is no allegation of corruption that's taking place in the us there's no allegation of corruption that is taking place uh, in canada in india to cause an indian state electricity distribution company which they have identified the states to enter into contracts with the seci in order for the indian energy company the indian energy company subsidiaries and the us issuer which is azure to obtain and retain business so they are alleging from new york that the chatisgarh state electricity distribution board corrupt andhra pradesh corrupt jammu and kashmir corrupt tamil nadu corrupt officials of odisha corrupt they are also suggesting that the official agencies set up by the union government the secci corrupt and these were all being bribed this is the allegation that the americans are making of what is happening inside india they know better obviously to accomplish the objectives of the then ongoing illegal bribery scheme cyril saurabh deepak and rupesh together with others concealed the scheme from the us government okay this is their justification of their locus standi what is our locus standi because all the corruption is taking place in india so how do we justify our case well we say oh you concealed the information from us and you are listed in new york so therefore uh, it's a crime in here okay then they go about saying securities and wire frauds happen that they obtained more than 2 billion of united states dollar denominated bank loans 
from international financial institutions and US based state management companies offering more than 1 billion in securities underwritten by international financial institutions and marketed and sold to investors in the US. Locus standi for the New York prosecutor, number 2 right here, among other places. And they caused irrevocably committed themselves in the US millions of dollars in the securities of this Indian energy company which they say was conducting bribery. That Gautam Adani, Sagar Adani, Vinit Jain made false and misleading statements, omitted material facts, locus standi. Remember the corruption is they say taking place in India, in Chhattisgarh which is an opposition rule state, in Andhra which was an opposition rule state, in Odisha opposition rule state, Tamil Nadu opposition rule state, Jammu and Kashmir which of course in 2019 has been under left and governor. That Gautam Adani, Sagar Adani, Vinit Jain relied on the US financial system to perturate their fraudulent scheme. This is locus standi number 3 that they are that the US financial system was being used by them to raise funds to perpetuate their fraud in India, their bribery in India. Okay? Now, then they come to what the corrupt solar project is. They say between 2019 and 2020, Azure Okay, issued letters of award, LOAs, for a manufacturing linked solar tender offered by the SECI, which is run by the Union Government of India. As part of the award, the US issuer agreed to supply 4 gigawatts of solar power to SECI, which is again the central union run agency that promotes solar power in this country. And the Indian Energy Company subsidiary, which is an Adani subsidiary, agreed to supply 8 gigawatts of solar power to the SECI. In turn, was responsible for finding state electricity distribution companies that would purchase the 12 gigawatts of power that the Indian Energy Company subsidiary and the US issuer. So, this is Azure, this is Adani, they say. Okay? So, they are saying that these guys came on an LOA with the Indian government, Union Government's agency for 12 gigawatts, 4 plus 8. And it was the SECI's job to find purchasers from the state boards for this. Okay? Fixed rate was established for the power. At the time, the size and scope of the manufacturing lift project was among the largest global solar energy projects. The largest global solar energy project in the world. Okay? Two of the top five are in India. One is in Gujarat, the other is in Tamil Nadu. The manufacturing link project more than doubled the capacity of the renewable power under the Indian Energy Company and the US issuer's portfolio. After the award, the Indian Energy Company, which is Adani, issued a media release and they go on to put the media release. Okay. The manufacturing link project was anticipated to generate considerable profits for the emerging producers. The US issuer, which is Azure, anticipated that over 20 years they would generate 2 billion in profits after tax okay? uh, because investments are logically made to earn a profit. So, that is what the US issuer assumed. Now, the mechanics of the bribery scheme which again I repeat took place says the New York prosecutor wholly and solely in India. All the bribes were taking place in India they say. Now, the high energy prices contemplated by the LOAs made it difficult for the SECI to find Indian state buyers of energy under the MLP. After the award of the MLP, the SECI unsuccessfully sought out Indian state and union governments to purchase the 12 gigawatts of solar power. Without the PSAs to sell the energy to a state buyer, SECI would not enter into the corresponding PPAs to purchase the power from Adani and its subsidiaries or Azure. Its inability to find purchasers jeopardized the lucrative LOAs and the corresponding revenue. And Adani and Azure received the MLPs. As a result, in or around 2020, Gautam Adani, Sagar Adani, Vineet Jain and Rajit Gupta, among others, devised a scheme to offer, authorize, make and promise to make bribe payments to Indian government officials in exchange for the government officials, causing state electricity distribution companies to enter into PSAs with the SECI, which would allow the Indian Energy Company subsidiaries and the US issuer to secure the PPAs with the SECI. During the course of the bribery screen, the co-conspirators undertook extensive efforts to corruptly persuade government officials to cause state electricity distribution companies to execute PSAs 
frequently discuss those efforts amongst themselves, including through the use of electronic messaging applications. Defendant Gautam Adani personally met with foreign official number one in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, this is a non-US resident, so this is an Indian. To advance the execution of the PSA between SECI and the Andhra Pradesh state electricity distribution companies, including on or about August 7th, 2021 or September 12th, 2021 and November 20, 2021. They are saying three meetings took place between this Andhra Pradesh electricity company guy and Gautam Adani. In furtherance, Gautam Adani, Sagar Adani, Vinit Jain had offered and promised to Indian government officials approximately 2,000 crore rupees. 2,000 crore rupees. This is the charge where they get the figure of 250 million dollars from. Where are they getting the figure of 250 million dollars from? It's from this 2,000 crore rupees that they say was the allegation of bribery. Now, 2,029 crore rupees Okay, let's zoom in so we can stay focused into the live shots from what I am underlining. 2029 crore rupees, okay, which is 265 million dollars. Okay, that is they say, let's make it readable, please. Kulbushan ji, help us out. Let's make it readable, please, so that our viewers can follow along. Okay, this is what the scale of the bribery they say took place okay approximately 1750 crore rupees 228 million dollar rupees was offered to foreign official number one so they are saying that an official of the andhra pradesh state government was offered a bribe of 1750 crore rupees in order to get the contracts done. I'm sorry, my camera person is really struggling with the basics of Zoom and how to do focus and all. He'll get that sorted out for you. Okay. This is what they're saying, that an Andhra Pradesh official, an Indian citizen in Andhra Pradesh was offered 1,750 crores. A large chunk of the bribe was offered to this fellow in order to get the contracts, in order to get the Andhra Pradesh distribution companies to agree to purchase 7 gigawatts. And when did this happen? Mega, my, uh, my colleague is going to Google the dates. It happened in 2021. Okay. Now, 2021, Andhra Pradesh is under an opposition government of Jagan Reddy. Okay. So, they are saying in an opposition rule state of Jagan Reddy, an official of the Andhra Pradesh government was offered 1,750 crore rupees. Okay, so what are they basically saying that Jagan Reddy was running a corrupt administration in the electricity board knowing or unknowingly. Okay, following the promise of bribes to Indian government officials in or about July 2021, February 2022, the electricity distribution company for the states of Odisha, Jammu and Kashmir, Tamil Nadu, Chhattisgarh and Andhra entered into the PSAs with the SECI for the MLP. Andhra Pradesh's electricity distribution companies entered into a PSC with the SECI on December 1, 2021. Okay. Pursuant to which the state agreed to purchase approximately 7 gigawatts of solar power, by far the largest amount of any Indian state or region. So, the fact that the Andhra Pradesh state government was actually buying solar power is a bad thing, obviously. They should not be buying solar power. Why would anybody want to buy solar power in this day and age? Okay. The only reason they would buy solar power, of course, is because they were bribed with 1750 crore rupees. Okay. That's the detail. Then it goes into the various details of the, of the entire scandal in Andhra Pradesh. So, and here are the details. Okay. Let me go through the details. 650 megawatts of solar power for Chhattisgarh, Tamil Nadu, Odisha and Jammu and Kashmir collectively. 2.3 gigawatts of solar power for Andhra Pradesh. And the subsidiaries of the Indian company executed their own PPAs with the SECI in which they agreed to supply the SECI. So, what they are saying is that the SECI, which is in the center, Adani agrees to supply the power after they agree to buy the power. Okay? That's what they are saying. Okay? Now, believe it or not, 
they are saying that they were bribe notes because Sagar Adani used his cellular phone to track specific details of the bribes offered and promised government officials that bribe notes exist, that the bribe notes identified the state or region for which the government officials had been offered a bribe, the total amount of the offered bribes, the approximate amount of solar power the state or region would agree to purchase in exchange for the bribe. In most instances, the bribe notes also identified per megawatt rate for the total bribe amount offered. The abbreviated titles of the government officials who would receive the bribes and or the allocation of the total bribe amount among government officials within each state or region. Okay. So, they are saying that Sagar Adani, the nephew of Gautam Adani was keeping notes of everything. Okay. What a genius thing to do. Keep notes of everything uh, so that you know how much bribe you have to give to whom in order for what and forget the total amount that per megawatt they had come to a rate of what bribe would be given per megawatt. So, do the mathematics, Mega is going to do the mathematics, 2300 megawatts divided by 1750 crore rupees tells you roughly that about 70 lakh rupees of bribes were being offered per megawatt of power purchase, okay, roughly. Now, it goes on to say later that when the defendant Ranjit Gupta went to make secure payments from Andhra Pradesh link PPS for the US issuer and subsidiaries of the Indian company. This information was shared by Saurabh Agarwal and Malhotra with Cyril Kabans, who was working for the Canadian pension fund. Okay. Five days later, on December 16, 2021, the US issuer executed the 2.3 gigawatt PPAs that they would supply that much power. Okay. Then they say on April 25, 2022, Gautam Adani was scheduled to meet in New Delhi in India to discuss the bribery scheme. In anticipation of the meeting, Jain used his cellular phone to photograph a document summarizing the amounts of the US issuer owed the Indian energy company for his respective portion of the bribes promised by the Indian energy company on behalf of the US issuer. So, they are saying even the bribe was divided between the Adani subsidiary and Azure. And a photograph was taken by Mr. Jain regarding what the breakup was. This is what they are claiming. The summary reflected that the US issuer owed the Indian energy company 55 crore rupees, 7 million dollars for the bribes, promised to secure the 650 megawatts and 583 crore rupees, approximately 76 million dollars for the bribes for the 2.3 gigawatts to Andhra Pradesh. So, they are saying a note was made about who is bribing whom, kiska kitna hissa of the bribes, believe it or not. Okay. Then they go on to say that on April 20, 25, 2022, the US issuers board of directors asked the defendant Ranjit Gupta to resign from their positions, which they did. The next day, the US issuer publicly announced Ranjit Gupta and co correspond resignations from their respective positions. That five days later, Azure asked these guys to quit and then publicly announced their resignations. And then on 27th, which is two days later, Gautam Adani contacted Saurabh Agarwal to request a meeting with Azure's new leadership. Following his communications, the defendants directed the defendant Rupesh Agarwal to attend a meeting with Gautam Adani in Ahmedabad, Gujarat in behalf of Azure. Then they say that on April 29, two days later, Rupesh Agarwal met with the defendants Adani, Sagar, Vineet Jain in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Two days later, they flown to Gujarat to have a meeting, they say. During the meeting, Gautam Adani, they are saying detailed aspects of the bribery scheme. He sat in the meeting. Okay. They are saying, Gautam Adani personally sat in the meeting, they are saying it started discussing openly bribery with somebody he just met 5 minutes ago. I want you to process this for a second. They are saying that one of India's richest people who runs massive companies spoke to a chap 2 days ago. He walks into his office and the first thing they are doing is discussing bribery, corruption and who is going to bribe whom. Bribe whom. This then goes on in details for another five pages of meetings, of messages they say that were exchanged. Now, it goes on to say that the corrupt transfer of the 2.3 gigawatt PPS to the Indian Energy Company's subsidiary, that the 2.3 uh, gigawatt PPAs which were issued to the Indian Energy Company and its subsidiary 
they contrived in pretextual reasons to return the 2.3 gigawatts to the SECA, which they presented to the US issuers board of directors that Azure, they say, says, sorry, we want to return the PPAs, we can't do this. Okay. Then those PPAs on the obfuscated the true reason the US issuer. They say that they say ongoing litigation, project, deteriorating economics, blah, blah, blah were reasons. So, that is why we cannot do it. Then they say Kabans, Agarwal and Malhotra also concealed from the board of directors and others to whom they reported the corrupt monies they had agreed to pay to the Indian energy company for the bribes promised to secure the 650 megawatt contract. The defendants, they say Gautam Adani, Sagar Adani, Vineet Jain secretly directing the US issuers return of the 2.3 gigawatt PPAs to the SECI. They kept each other apprised of the progress of the project's return. The same did that the US issuers board of directors authorized the letter to the SECI. On or about November 22, 2021, Sagar Adani sent an electronic message to Gautam Adani stating that the 24th Thursday, there is a board meeting in the US issuer where they are expected to approve the final letter to the SECI. We will keep a close track and chase it up properly. So, the US prosecutors say they have the details of all the messages they claim of Sagar Adani, Gautam Adani. How they got it? They will have to tell us before a court. Then they say 7 December the letter gets issued. Then Gautam Adani states that we will, the, we will follow up next steps closely. Sagar Adani and others secretly influenced the SECI process. So, they corrupted and influenced the process of that company including and or the organization owned or operated by the union government. Okay? Then there was an obstruction scheme on a general inquiry on this matter issued by the Securities and Exchange Commission which started in March 1722 that they obstructed, obstructed the details when the SEC went to investigate this and then they go out for another 7 pages, 6 pages on how the obstruction happened. Then they pick up the fraud, alleged fraud in which they say misleading statements, bond offerings underwritten on the basis of bribery and fraudulent contracts which can only be taken through bribery and therefore they are justifying the locus of their case. Then the 2021 fraudulent financial transaction, the syndicate loan that the company took in order to fulfill its projects, that these were all obviously they say fraudulent. The bond offerings they took, they say were all fraudulent. They are going on to say that all these bond op offerings, all the monies to the tune of 2 billion dollars that was raised was all fraudulent because there was corruption happening in the obtaining of the contracts which of course was happening solely in India between Indian companies uh, owned and operated by state governments and the Union Government of India. And there is a detail for the next 12 pages and this is where it sums up before I come to my guess. <coughs> in or about the allegations, conspiracy to violate the FCPA which is a US Congress Act that between 2020 and 24 within the Eastern District of New York and elsewhere and out of the jurisdiction of any particular state or district, the defendants Ranjit Gupta, Cyril Kaban, Saurabh Agarwal, Deepak Mulhotra and Rupesh Agarwal together with co-conspirator 1 and 2 and others did knowingly and willfully conspire to commit one or more offenses against the United States of America. Then they go on to say they offered payment of money, gifts, promise to give an authorization of the giving of anything of value to a foreign official to a foreign political party and official thereof and to a person while knowing that all or a portion of the such money and thing of value would be offered given and promised directly and indirectly to a foreign official and to a foreign political party and official thereof for the purposes of influencing acts. So, foreign bribery they are saying is against American law. Okay? Good to know. Inducing such foreign officials, securing improper advantage, inducing such foreign officials to use his or her influence within a foreign government, all they say is of course illegal. They also go on to say that the US issuer subsidiary, the Canadian investor which is the Canadian pension fund, the Canadian investor subsidiary and others are also involved in this entire process. While in the territory of the United States corruptly to make use of emails and means and instrumentalities of interstate commerce and to do any act of furtherance of offer, payment or promise to pay money, gift authorization of giving or anything of value that all of these meetings because these people were living in the US was taking place on US soil. So, that is the locus turned That they influenced decisions of foreign officials, foreign political parties, foreign officials, foreign political parties, okay? inducing, securing improper advantage, inducing, 
okay this is the charge of the conspiracy then they say overt acts to convince states to purchase power under the mlp a part of which gupta wrote the advantage we have is that the discoms are being motivated that gupta sent an electronic message to sagar adani that on april 2029 gautam adani and vinith jain met with each other where they discussed the bribery scheme that kabans while in the united states exchange electronic messages with the conspirators for the bribery scheme that saurabh agarwal exchange electronic messages on the bribery scheme while in the united states saurabh agarwal rupesh agarwal had a meeting this is all a justification of why this comes under the new york prosecutor's office okay it goes on in details which meeting which sms which uh, which uh, electronic con- co- communication which they claim they have full information of so that's the first count the second count of allegation is that between around 2021 within the eastern district of new york and elsewhere and out of the jurisdiction of any particular state gautam adani sagar adani and vinith then together with others knowingly and willfully conspired to use and employ manipulative and deceptive devices this is to they are saying failure to inform the us investors overt acts that they met they sent a message wire fraud uh, almost all these cases are wire fraud involved in them because any transaction that takes place uh, through the transaction of money's via wire comes under wire fraud count 4 that these guys knowingly and willfully conspired to use and employ manipulative and deceptive devices contrary to rule 10b5 of the rules and regulations of us securities and exchange commission so count 4 is not only have you violated the fcpa but you also violated the sec and finally count 5 that in 2022 siril saurabh deepak and rupesh together with others intentionally conspired to corruptly alter destroy mutilate and conceal records so obstruction of an investigation okay they are given notice to the defendants that upon their conviction of any such offenses the government of the united states will seek forfeiture which require any person convicted of such offenses to forfeit any property real or personal derived from proceeds obtained directly so basically they're trying to say that if we convict you okay we're going to take all everything we got to seize all your assets cannot be located upon the excise of due diligence has been transferred or sold these will also be brought in it doesn't make a difference if it's in the, it's outside the jurisdiction of the court i don't know does that mean they're saying that we want to seize assets within india what does that mean okay this ladies and gentlemen is the 54 page chart sheet which has been signed by brion peace United States District Attorney Eastern District of New York and by Glenn Leon Chief Fraud Section Criminal Division US Department of Justice has also countersigned this